Pluto was never the true boundary of the solar system. Beyond its orbit lies a wide, sparsely lit region filled with icy remnants from the system's earliest formation. For a long time, these distant objects were assumed to follow scattered, loosely organized paths. Though as observations improved, a quieter pattern began to surface. Several of the farthest known bodies were found moving along elongated, oddly similar trajectories, all tilted in the same general direction. Yet the same unusual structure appeared again and again in the data. Whatever was shaping those orbits wasn't easy to detect, but its influence had left a clear, measurable signature. At this point, the explanation splits the scientific community in two. One side argues the simplest answer is the right one. A massive, unseen planet is shaping these distant orbits through gravity alone. No exotic physics, just a body, several times larger than Earth, moving in deep space so slowly and so dark that our telescopes haven't caught it yet. The other side isn't convinced, since there are many other possibilities. A hidden disk of debris, or errors in a limited data set. To them, introducing a new planet is a serious claim, one that requires more than unusual orbits. It would reshape the structure of the solar system as we understand it, rewriting models, reinterpreting data, which forces us to rethink how the outer regions formed in the first place. But the more researchers examined the evidence, the harder it became to dismiss. The distant objects clustered in ways that shouldn't persist for billions of years without a stabilizing force. Their orbits were being shepherded, gently but consistently, as if influenced by something large and gravitationally dominant. Simulations began to reproduce that behavior only when an additional massive body was added to the model. A world roughly five to 10 times the mass of Earth, following a stretched, highly elliptical orbit that keeps it hundreds of times farther from the sun than we are. If such a planet exists, it wouldn't simply be far away. It would be slow, taking thousands of years to complete a single orbit, meaning that for all of human history, it could have occupied the same dim section of sky. Even our best survey struggle to detect objects that distant unless they reflect just the right amount of light and happen to lie in the narrow regions we've already mapped. A planet with a dark surface or an unusual angle could easily slip through every scan we've taken so far. Which brings us to the central tension. Either the outer solar system is hiding a massive, undiscovered world, or something even stranger is shaping those orbits. If we assume the simplest interpretation is correct, that the gravitational signature belongs to a real planet, then the next step becomes a search. And for the first time, that search is reaching the level of precision needed to reveal something this faint. Over the past decade, new sky surveys have transformed how we scan the outer solar system. The Subaru telescope has already mapped regions once considered unreachable, identifying objects hundreds of times fainter than anything we detected in earlier generations. And soon, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory will push that capability even further, imaging the sky with a depth and speed no previous survey could match. If Planet Nine exists, these next observations won't just increase our chances of seeing it, they may eliminate entire sections of sky where it cannot be. And there's another reason scientists think we're approaching a turning point. The behavior of the distant objects is becoming harder to explain without a single dominant source of gravity. As more extreme Kuiper Belt objects are discovered, the pattern is becoming sharper. Their orbits point toward a region that grows narrower with every new discovery. The real question now is, what would Planet Nine actually look like? Due to it being so far away, it wouldn't look anything like the familiar planets closer to the sun. At that distance, sunlight is little more than a faint glow, too weak to reveal much detail. From far away, the planet would appear as a dim, slow-moving spark, barely distinguishable from the background stars. That's part of the reason it has remained hidden. It simply reflects too little light for most surveys to notice. But models give us a reasonable idea of what such a world would be like. Planet Nine would most likely be an ice giant, a smaller, darker cousin of Neptune. Its upper atmosphere would be cold and dense, dominated by hydrogen, helium, and methane, with temperatures low enough to mute nearly all visible color. Whatever clouds formed there would gather and shift slowly, guided more by the planet's remaining internal heat than by the distant trace of sunlight. This planet wouldn't be a dramatic world. It would simply drift through the outer dark, carrying the history of the early solar system in its orbit and its mass. Even with all these theories, the most important part is what its discovery would tell us. 
A confirmed detection would explain decades of unexplained orbital behavior in a single step. The strange clustering of distant objects, the elongated paths, all of it would finally make sense under the influence of one slow-moving, distant world. It would mean the solar system is larger, more structured, and far more dynamic than we once believed. If the planet is found, the models match the sky. If it isn't, then the mystery deepens, because the orbital patterns themselves are not disappearing. Every new discovery reinforces the same gravitational imbalance, and the region those orbits point toward keeps narrowing. If no planet is hiding there, something else must be shaping that part of the solar system something we don't yet understand. For now, the outer solar system is still unfinished in our maps. And until the final piece is found, the debate remains open. And be sure to let me know in the comments what you think is shaping those distant orbits.